we want to integrate cosine x from zero to pi over two. To do this, we'll use the fundamental theorem of calculus stated here below, where if the integrand function f of x is continuous, and big F of x is any antiderivative of f of x, meaning the derivative of big F of x is equal to little f of x, then the integral of f from a to b is equal to big F of b minus big F of a. So very soon we'll have a list of antiderivative formulas, but for right now, let's find the antiderivative based upon what we know about derivatives. Meaning we want to find a function big F of x such that its derivative is equal to cosine x, the integrand function. So again, we're looking for a function that has a derivative of cosine x, which should remind us of our derivative formula, the derivative of sine x equals cosine x. And therefore, big F of x, our antiderivative function, is equal to sine x. So to evaluate this definite integral, we'll use the antiderivative function sine x, where we'll evaluate this at the upper limit of integration of pi over two, then at the lower limit of integration of zero, and then we'll find the difference. So here we'd have big F of pi over two, that'd be sine pi over two, and then minus big F of zero, which would be sine zero. Well, sine pi over two is equal to one, sine zero is equal to zero, so this integral is equal to positive one. Now there's one more thing I do want to mention. The integrand function cosine x is non-negative over the closed interval from zero to pi over two. And therefore the value of this definite integral would be equal to the area under the function and above the x-axis on this closed interval. Let's take a look. Here's a graph of f of x equals cosine x, the integrand function. If we shade the area under the function above the x-axis over the interval from zero to two pi, this would be the area, and this area it's exactly equal to one square unit, the same value as this def integral. I hope you found this helpful.